What's the name of the association? The name of going back about 400 years, a family was uh, Ska, uh, and um, they got into some political trouble around the time of uh, of uh, uh, Wee Geordie, the you know the uh, the bastard king of <laughs> England, etc. I don't know the exact politics, but we had to flee, okay. so we, we are fled. We oh, we, are. we fled okay. to Ireland and uh, changed the name from MacIan to McKean, which was uh, neutrally Scots-Irish, and uh, that's supposedly how it happened. Then we came over here and signed the Declaration of Independence, and we're very active uh, in the Revolution, all that stuff. So we're definitely Americans more than anything else. And there we have the background of Michael McKean. In a nutshell, McKeon. yes. <laughs> hey, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet Enjoyed you. Enjoyed your performance very, very much. Thanks. You're this very hyper hustler type guy. I couldn't help it but wonder when I saw the opening scenes where you're the street vendor selling the thirty nine ninety five Rolex watches, please, yeah. my art. You didn't buy that? <laughs> Looked legitimate to me. <laughs> but have you ever bought anything from a street vendor? No, no. Uh, I, I, street vendors are kind of like uh, uh, dinosaurs now, as far as I'm concerned. I go to like very very well-established, high-tech sort of showrooms and get taken. <laughs> so I don't need to go down the street corner to do this. Uh, no, I, it's, just, it's never occurred to me that anything you buy off, I think, if, I guess if you buy like a trinket or something, that's like, you know is not worth that much, okay. But I wouldn't, I do, I've had people come up to me and offer to sell me watches, you know. And when they roll up the sleeve like this and they got nine watches on there, you know that <laughs> Maybe your turnover is not the most important deal he'll make today anyway, so... Uh, I always think that, watch out, he's, he's reaching for my wallet at the same time he he's be. showing he me the, yeah. the watches. I, yeah. I get rid of those guys in a hurry. Yeah, I, uh, I had the experience, this is kind of in a more carnal aspect, but I was driving down the street, uh, going to make a, a right on Sunset once, and this, um, this young lady, who was rather heavily made up and rather skimpily attired, reached into the car. And how would I know she was reaching for my wallet? <laughs> you know, it was one of those things. There was definitely some kind of solicitation going on there. And yet, if she could have come away with the cowhide with the gash in it, then that would have been just as good. So you always got to be careful. That's true. You, know, you never know what someone's trying to sell or just take. Let's talk a little bit about your working with number five. Okay. Let's say five, ten years from now, and you're looking back on this movie, what are you going to remember as the <laughs> wildest thing that happened? Well, wildness, eh? Uh, I guess it was the third time we had to reshoot the scene of me going down the street on the robot's back. Because while we're not really going 50 miles an hour like it looks, it was so cold and so unpleasant, and we had done it so many times because of various mistakes in the film, in the, the technological aspects of the film. Uh, I don't know whether that's such a wild moment, but it's certainly one that'll make me grit my teeth. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It was it was a fairly plodding experience, um, broken up mainly by the presence of uh, Mr. Stevens and uh, Mr. Weston and Miss Gibb. We were all kind of in an absurd situation and did have a lot of fun on the set, so that was nice. Did you ever feel that sometimes the actor part of it, your part mm -hmm. of it, maybe was taking a back seat because of all the technology involved with Number Five? Um, Gee, I don't think so. I just I think it it was kind of demanding. So I think that's the opposite happening. I think it's like uh, maybe the challenge was to treat it like uh, you know a real situation. Chances are, in my real life, if I ran into a robot thing like this, I'd look around for who was working it. I wouldn't buy that this was really happening. But to make that step to like swallow the story you're being told, I think that's step one of any acting performance. And it was kind of a challenge this time. So, I don't know whether it takes a back seat or not. I, I found it, at, by turns, amusing and frustrating. Would you like to have in your home some kind of a robot that could do menial tasks? I would like to have a robot that would read the instruction manuals that come with my computer software and explain <laughs> them to me in very simple language. But then again, what is a computer? A computer is something that's supposed to make me understand better, you know. Actually, I didn't start fooling with a computer. Uh, uh, I was just starting, just starting working with it when I was doing this uh, this film. And um, you'll never, you'll never squeeze the personality out of these things in real life. I guess if you 
have something that gets struck by lightning and you make this buy that, oh, this is a living thing now, that's, I still can't make that buy in real life because I know that you know, a computer is only as smart or as idiotic as the person who's uh, supplying the input. Well, it's a fun movie and it's Thank fun you. to watch you in it. I appreciate that. And I just talked to your old friend Penny Marshall oh. a week or so ago. Yeah. One of the best people in the entire, in this or any other business, I might add. Yeah. Yeah, she's Neat got lady. a big new movie. I haven't seen it yet, but um, I got faith in her. Okay, and Tom Michael. Hanks, too. Awfully yes. funny man. Good to talk with you. Same here. Thanks a lot. Bye. Nice interview. Do you have any reacts? Yes, I do have to do reacts. Something. Wait a, wait, wait a sure. second. Michael, what is the wildest day you ever had working on this movie? Would you like to have a robot around the house that could do some of the menial tasks for you? Have you ever bought anything from a street vendor? Okay, uh, now let's just do reactions. That should do it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.